I still believe that's worth going to jail for. Uh, only God could present a sound and produce a sound like that. Oh, if you'd have seen them when they came in. And can you imagine my Lone Star State, my native state, closing down ministries like these? There's something haywire in this country. And we need to return to the Word of God and to uh, Jesus. Father, we're conscious tonight that there are many friends here. Visitors are here. No doubt some are so empty and miserable and unhappy and without peace. Lord, show them they're in the midst now of an opportunity that could solve every problem they've got. And Father, speak to the mothers and dads. Thank you for these that have come to the altar tonight. We're going to close the service tonight by saying and singing, I want to do... so good, these precious little girls, with their lives wrecked, their hopes shattered, come and meet the Savior, get saved, born again, their lives are made whole and they find something worth living for. Brother Roloff also operates a home for girls in Hattiesburg, Mississippi. As the most progressive state in the South, Mississippi has not attempted to pass any laws restricting the operation of such church-related homes. a testimony uh, while somebody stands by me. Beth, will you come? And I want to tell the young people, you might notice when Beth comes, she's going to be limping. She has an artificial limb. This is what dope has done to a little girl, just 14, that this home has helped. And I believe the last letter I got was so sweet and so fine. And I'd like, since we're crowded for time, I'd like to say that this little girl was run over by a train, and the train never did know it. But there was a boy that did like a lot of boys that uh, got her on some dope. She ran away from her mother and daddy who loved her, and um, she lay there for a lot of hours, about four hours maybe, and um, the boy was killed instantly. Just a few pounds of him was found left. And when she looked up and saw a headlight coming and tried to figure out what it was, and it was another train, and she reached down, but one of her legs was gone, her foot was gone, and she touched the other one and found out that she still had one she rolled off of the track. Now, talk about a miracle in rescuing a little girl. Jesus must have loved her real good. And, of course, we do, too, but uh, he spared her life. And she screamed, I'm sure, as any little girl would scream when she realized that she'd been mangled by a train.
But remember, the daddy of that tragedy was dope and rebellion and running from mother and from dad. The best friend a little girl ever had down here is a Christian mother and dad. But somebody heard her cry, like Jesus heard my cry. I'd been run over by the railroad train of sin, and Jesus rescued me. And um, she went to the hospital and lingered for a number of days. And you'd say, it's so good that the train saved her and stopped her from running. That's not the case. Tragedy doesn't stop you. It'll take truth, and that's Jesus. Accidents won't save you, but providence will. And so when she got her artificial limb that she's learned to walk real good on, she decided she just didn't like it at home because she still had heart trouble, sin trouble. And she went right back to the same old pig pen that she was in and in trouble. And her mother brought her here after hearing about the Bethesda home. And it'd be hard for anybody to stay here long without uh, breaking out with love and getting a hold of something good and right. And so we've prayed a many a time for Beth. The devil would like to prove that Jesus is not real, but he is real. Amen. And I'm glad that Beth has been saved and y'all are helping her a great deal. And I want her to keep on growing in grace and she ought to be a limping testimony <laughs> against dope. We also work with boys. We keep them 50 miles down the intercoastal waterway at a place called the Lighthouse that's operated for about a fifth of a century. All of them in trouble with the law. We take only terminal cases at the Lighthouse. Boys that nobody else would take. No license home would take. And yet their problem is sin. Therefore, Jesus Christ is the answer. All these boys would be in jail if they were not here. And we furnish plenty of fruit, watermelon, fresh air, fresh fish, and fresh fellowship, best of all. And the biggest swimming pool in the world, I guess. All right, boys, time for watermelon hey, break. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Crack him open, boy. Hey, we need a heart. Hey! <laughs> man alive. You talk about this, Jack. Man, look here, son. Now, you're the superintendent, huh? Huh? Come on, now. Boy, I tell you what, huh? Hey, mm. sir. Boy, isn't that good? Yes, sir. I tell you the truth. Well, say, listen, we're down here at the lighthouse. I see the boys swimming over here. <laughs> They're trying to get over here, aren't they? <laughs> saw the watermelon cutting. But uh, this is the Lighthouse International Airport. We're standing here with the boys and got a lot of watermelons we brought to them. And I tell you what, we have a great time. Amen. All these boys have been saved. Amen? Amen. That's right. Amen. All the way from West Indies, Amen. Atlanta, Georgia. Yeah. That's right. Boy, he got his testimony that he said, let us pray. <laughs> That's good. I like that. I do. Boy, everybody bowed too, you know. Thank got mighty quiet around there when he said, let's pray. <laughs> well, I tell you, we just had a wonderful time. And, uh, boys, I like that watermelon. We just got those out of the field a while ago. They're kind of warm. We just got them, picked them out of the field and brought them in the airplane and uh, brought a load of fruit. Well, the Bible said we ought to bear fruit. Amen? Amen. And so here we are. All right. Hey, mm-hmm. Mm. Well, that's good. That's good. That's good. That's good. Really is. We'd like to say to all of our radio friends, thank you for the Zapata home where they raised the watermelon. Everywhere we've been the last few days, we've had watermelon. Hey, boy. Jack, <laughs> you'd be in the penitentiary if it wasn't for you, being here. And they wouldn't serve watermelon like this. You know what I mean? <laughs> 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 That's a mouthful, wasn't it? <laughs> well, we do have a great time, and i tell you one thing. The boys wouldn't be getting this kind of watermelon at the jailhouse. When we arrive and land on the little dirt runway and by the edge of the King Ranch, we always go straight to the chapel. And the boys are all there, ready to sing. And this is really our workshop. 
And this is where the Savior carries on his business meeting and um, gives the boys the heart transplant, makes them new creatures in Christ, and all things pass away, and behold, all things become new. And then we teach them another thing, and that's to do the will of God in their life. I love the lighthouse. The boys have caught our fish for us. They laid them. And um, we've had many heartaches and dangers. It's the most dangerous home that I've ever had. We've never had any serious accidents until lately. The devil has made some mighty attacks. And the enemy has done his best to use it to close our doors. The lighthouse must keep its light burning. We want all of our people to pray for us, that the Lord will bless us and supply our needs. Folks, I wish y'all would help us build a dormitory. I really do. We need a dormitory for 60 boys on the ground. I mean, can you imagine that plane bringing most of the groceries and the boats coming 50 miles in the water? Let's just bow our heads, boys, and pray, will you? You know, we prayed for a flotel. Do you remember that? Yeah. The Lord said, I'll give you twice as much as you got when we knelt in the ash pile. Our Heavenly Father, I pray in Jesus' name that you'll give us a dormitory. I need to build dormitories for boys on the ground. I've got too many down at the lighthouse, and I plan to bring them in. Fact is, I plan to build a dormitory for boys immediately, and we're going to get started. We've got to put them on the ground, leave a fishing crew down there, 30, 40, and something like that. And then we need to build the gymnasium and health center for the girls. We've got to build a new cafeteria for the girls. We've got to build a dormitory for women that are in trouble. And uh, we've got to build a dormitory for widows and orphans, people that are in trouble. And we know what to do with them and help them bring their children up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. It saved millions and millions of tax dollars to take care of the children and the widows without them having to run the streets and become criminals. We keep the younger boys up through age 16 and even up to 18 down in Zapata, Texas. And this is where we grow many watermelons as well as fine boys. Brother Harmon Oxford is the superintendent and Brother John Bradley is that uh, wonderful principal of our ACE school. One of our boys, Frank Van Coe, wrote an essay on Old Glory, which won first place at the annual ACE convention at Lynchburg, Virginia. Old Glory, I've seen many a picture of you when you were in your prime. How properly were you named Old Glory? I've seen many a portrait of you as you appeared to Francis Scott Key when you waved over Fort McHenry during the War of 1812. How proudly you waved, and every right you had to do so. You represent that which was good and clean and worth the giving up of even one's life. Yet, Old Glory, these were just pictures, reminders of days gone by. As I look upon you now, my heart bleeds. No longer do you proudly wave over the land of the free and the home of the brave. No longer are you...